These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Um, first of all, when something is happy, does it have high or low energy? Which one? Ooh, happy or like stable? Those are the same thing. Oh, and yeah, that's right. So somebody who is stable is somebody that doesn't want to change into something else. So it would make sense to call them happy, right? If you're happy, you're not going to try to change into something else. That's the way I think about it. Something unstable is unstable because it's unhappy. It wants to change into, into something else. So stable and happy, does that make any sense? No? So stable and happy means low energy. Everything wants to lower its energy. That might seem a little weird, um, but I don't know if you guys know any physics. If I drop this, uh, if I drop this paper, um, is it going to move to increase its gravitational potential energy or decrease it? Well, it moves down to where it has less gravitational potential energy. Everything tries to lower its energy. Okay. I lost my place. That was so smart. Well. Uh, Do these two substances want to bond, or do they not? So where are they happier? Are they happier on the left or on the right? right. Happier on the right. For one thing, here we have radicals, unpaired electrons. Well, nature doesn't like having radicals and unpaired electrons. It likes instead to form a pair of electrons between the hydrogen and the chloride. So this is going to be happier. Um, so uh, this what axis about, here. What about, what if it's um, H plus versus H? Which one is um, more stable? Because, yeah, because. H plus versus neutral hydrogen? Yes. Because in the equation, it'd be H um, goes to H plus plus an electron. But um, would H be more stable because that's how it is naturally? Or would H plus be more stable because it's, um, it satisfies the octet? Well, does nature like or dislike charges? Dislike? Yeah, it dislikes charges. So this would be less happy, um, higher energy, less stable, because we've created a charge. And in, in particular, we've separated charges. Nature doesn't like, or put another way, does this electron want to move towards the proton or away from it? Towards it. Yeah, and, and that would make this. Even so, we, so we can see that this must be the less stable. Even though it says, it becomes, in a sense, a noble gas, or? Like That's right. Of course, it's not the octet rule, because it doesn't have any electrons um, at all. Uh, I, I wouldn't really apply the octet rule here to hydrogen, uh, to, to H+. Plus. Okay. Um, like, same with lithium, for example. Right. That's a better example. So lithium has one unpaired valence electron, as well as two core electrons. But lithium is still more stable. That's right. Okay. That means, is this reaction going to consume energy or release energy? Con consume energy? Yeah, we have to put energy in to rip the electron away. <coughs> it doesn't want to leave. Um, what's the name of the energy that we have to put in? There's a special name for how much energy we have to put in. Yes, this is a very important concept. The ionization energy tells us how much energy it takes to take away an electron. So it always takes energy to take away an electron from something. One way to see that is you're separating charges. Also, the electron likes being close to the nucleus because that's where all the protons are. Electrons like being close to protons, where um, all the electrons are. Now, people get confused about this. A lot of people say, oh, this is going to get me to the left-hand column of the periodic table. And that's true. When we take away an electron, lithium has an electron structure that's like helium. It's on the right-hand side of the periodic table. And the reason that people get this wrong is because oftentimes instructors are sloppy about how they talk about this, uh, including me. So oftentimes I might say something like, um, lithium wants to become like uh, helium, but what we really should say is that lithium doesn't mind very much turning into helium because it gets the complete octet. Nobody likes losing an electron, but you mind it less if you're getting into the, into the last column of the periodic table, and people just get tired of always saying, oh, you mind it less, and they start saying that you like having this happen, but that's not really technically accurate. 
Um, all right, so it always takes energy to remove an electron. It just takes less energy to remove electrons from the elements in the left-hand column of the periodic table, because then they can wrap around to the right-hand column. That's why you learned about that periodic trend of how the ionization energies are smaller on the left-hand side of the periodic table. I think that's one of the things that you've covered. But you didn't learn that there weren't any ionization energies, right? You learned that they still had ionization energies. They're just smaller than for the elements on the right-hand side. So you're really assuming that nobody likes losing an electron. And that's what we'd expect, because the electron doesn't like being ripped away from all those nice protons in the nucleus. All right, so uh, let's see, where were we? Oh, so we were here, we were trying to understand this graph. Does that make sense, what we were talking about? Yeah. All right, so should we go back to this? Okay. All right, so we know that this is happier. Now, the horizontal axis here is the separation distance. This tells us how far apart the substances are. Um, well, obviously, over here, the substances are far apart because they're been, being considered as two separate species. And here, they're very close because they're bound to each other. So this over here represents when we're on the right-hand side of the horizontal axis. So should the energy here be relatively high or low? High. High. And then as they get closer and closer together, the energy falls. As these get closer, the energy falls because we know they like being closer. However, these are not going to get so close. Uh, there's a limit to how close they can get, right? There's a limit to how close they're going to get. Um, they're eventually going to form a bond between them, right? But they're not going to get so close that they're touching each other. There's going to be some separation. And the reason is that eventually, the electron cloud around here is going to repel the electron cloud around here. So eventually, if you got too close, the energy would start going up. And basically goes up to infinity. It's impossible to push them too close to each other because there's so much, um, well, not impossible, but it kind of becomes very difficult to push them very too close to each other because there's so much repulsion from the electron clouds. So the whole point of this diagram here is that this basic, what, how would we interpret this number? What does this number tell us about this molecule? The radius. Close, although you would probably think about radius when you're thinking about atomic radius. Mm -hmm. And here we have a molecule. So maybe it's better to think of this as the bond length. Okay. Roughly speaking, this is telling us the bond length because it's telling us what the separate, so remember this was supposed to be separation distance. This tells us how far apart the H and the CA will be once they form the molecule. They'll try to form the most stable molecule they can, and that will be when the energy is minimized. So roughly speaking, this is going to tell us the length of that bond. The nucleus to nucleus? Yeah. Okay. So, Roughly speaking, that would be the nucleus to nucleus radius. Okay. That's right. And then the height of that dip also should be the same thing, right? The height? Of the dip? Oh, well, this down here yeah. tells us um, how favored it is to create this molecule. This tells us, and also it tells us how hard it would be to rip apart the molecule. Okay. So the lower the dip is, the stabler the molecule is, and the harder it is to rip it apart. So the bond is yeah, that's right. This is really telling us the bond enthalpy. So I suppose that this distance here is the bond enthalpy. What does it look like as it goes to infinity? Does it go to zero? The you mean towards the right? Yeah. It just um, asymptotically, it, does, it stops changing after a while. Okay. Because once they're separated from each other, they don't, so, so suppose these were a mile away from each other. Well, they're so far from each other, they're having almost no impact. It's not going to make any difference to make them two miles away from each other. Once they're one mile away from each other, there's almost no interaction between them. Of course, one mile is way too big. Uh, but the point is, once these, are, um, big, once these are far enough away not to really be interacting with each other, it doesn't matter if you make them even further away. So wouldn't it be zero, then, the potential energy between the two? Uh, let's see. You know, I think you're right, and that's how they did it in the table as well. So that's a good point. Uh, of course, it's kind of arbitrary what we said to be zero. But yeah, it's best to set zero to be when they're free. So that's a good correction. I should have drawn it that way. That's how they did it here in the key as well. So if we think of the zero point as being when they're free, the zero point is for the free species. So this is telling us that when they're bonded, they're happier than when they're free. But if you try to push them too close to each other, they get less happy than when they were free. So that's a good correction. So now this would be the bond enthalpy, from the bottom of the well to zero point. This is the distance between the two points. Yeah, so this was our bond enthalpy. All right, 
so the basic lesson here is that separate atoms like getting close enough to form a bond between each other, but they don't like being form forced to get too close. And this tells you how happy they are to form the bond and how happy they are to form the molecule. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.